Hi, this is Diana, your favorite astronaut. And as you can see, it's starting to get cold and it's going to be probably in the high 20s tonight. But it's a beautiful night for astrophotography, clear, re relatively clear skies. Uh, the moon is out tonight, but that's not a problem because I have my Optolong filters that should take care of that. And tonight's face is about 92%. Uh, on the moon, the uh, Tulip Nebula, it's about 6,000 light years away from Earth. And it has two things like that, which is, uh, resembles like a tulip. My telescope is ready here, Skywatcher, that's me. And we are obviously parked on Polaris, so the Tulip Nebula is a little bit towards the northwest very close to vega and it's right here a little bit above vega and it's in the sickness constellation very close to the sickness star cloud which i want to photograph too here we continue doing a zoom in here and that's my target right there look how beautiful it's just the tulip <laughs> If we put it the other way, it can be a peace sign. So uh, pretty much this is the area that my telescope is going to be capturing. As I, My telescope is a 10-inch Newtonian telescope. And it has a focal length of 1,000. So I get pretty close right here. And these two stars, these four stars right here, are going to be my guide to be sure that I am uh, find the target and I am in the right place. But the first thing is to uh, do a quick start alignment. As my telescope, it's stationary and I don't move it. It stays here all the time. And I like to do Vega. So let's just go ahead and send the telescope there. Okay. And go. It's always very exciting for me uh, just to see the telescope to move right here. <laughs> Oh, I just love it. And I always get some really good surprises with it. So uh, let me just go ahead and uh, open SharpCap. And this is the uh, workflow that I do all the time. Uh, it works for me. I'm sure others, they do different things, uh, use different programs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. We are not too far. Uh, and also the stars look pretty much in focus too which I like this this telescope uh, stays in focus pretty pretty good I, I don't have to do too much with it obviously only when I have some uh, big changes in temperatures so that that looks pretty good right there and I'm just going to go ahead and center a little bit uh, Vega move it a little bit to the west mm-hmm stop it stop it okay now let me just go ahead little by little and that should be pretty good um i'm just going to sync with uh, stellarium so i like precision i don't like to be looking for a target all night so Trust me, I have learned the lesson and practice and uh, watch a lot of your tutorials. So I have learned a lot from you guys that I have Vega ready and in the center of the screen. Uh, now it's time to go for the Tulip Nebula. Okay, there you go. So let's just go, which is not too far. And let's see what happens. Let's just... Uh, Send the telescope there. <laughs> okay, we landed. Very good. So that's pretty much what is going to happen. Now it's time to start to turn some lights off. Ooh, okay. Very good. Let's just go ahead and check on the chart cap. And I do believe we are right on target as this, the stars, what I was talking about. Let me just give a little bit more light here. 
Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So uh, this right here, <laughs> it's right on. Uh, these are the stars that I was talking about. And I, of course, look them up a little bit before I start and have them familiar in my brain. You know, sometimes I have too much galactic dust in my brain. Uh, but tonight is a very good night. It's a clear night and I have a clear brain. So that's good. Um, so now I'm just going to frame them a little bit better. Put them more in the uh, center. And that looks about right. The framing, I just, you know, want to have the big nebulosity is going to be in this area. But this is my, my guide right here. The stars right here. I may go a little bit up. Let me just lower this to two, just to look, move a little bit. I don't like to have them too low, but look how great it looks already. Um, and of course, the next step, it's going to do a test photo. And I'm going to do it with uh, um, hydrogen alpha with ha filter. And... I need to close the uh, camera on shark cap. Okay, so now it's time to do a test photo uh, with a uh, huh, in 30 seconds only and let's see what happens. It's time to turn the screen in red. Okay, so that is looking really good right there. Look at that. This is just only 30 seconds. Uh, the images are going to be, each frame is going to be two minutes, which is the sweet spot that I found with this telescope and everything that I have. And also with still with all the uh, technical problems that I have with PhD2, as you can see, uh, I have... Uh, some problems here with backlash or something and I don't know how to fix that. I try many times, but I am planning on doing a short video showing my problems and maybe Astroblog, which is an expert on PhD2 can help me. Um, I need your help, dude. I mean, blog, <laughs> blog. <laughs> okay, so now we have it. Um, the next step, it's going to be uh, do some framing and some settings here. Okay, so the next step is to frame the uh, target, which I already found here, SH2101. That is the catalog uh, name or number. And just to go ahead and do this, and boom, that is what I'm going to be photographing tonight. I do like to, uh, my camera rotation, I believe right now it's at uh, minus 10 degrees or 10. And sometimes I forget, yeah, it's at 10, not minus, but 10.3 degrees uh, rotation. So that means that I have to have my flat frames on that same, uh, using the same uh, angle, the same rotation. So they work good. And that is all the stars that I was talking about. These two big stars that guide me and tell me, yes, that's it. Um, so the next step, it's going to be here, get the location of the telescope. Let me get the location from the telescope from, uh, no, in this case, yes, I can do it from the telescope and I can do it from Stellarium. Now I am going just to slew and center, let the telescope do its uh, plate solving and just let uh, Nina do the plate solve. And normally it's pretty accurate and I don't have to do too much. Just taking the exposures uh, right now. I try to be as steady as, uh, as possible. I don't like to be moving too much, but how can you just don't move when this is so exciting? I just want to be jumping right now all over the sky dome. Okay. It's not inside the tolerance. Uh, the, the Nina gets very intolerant. I, I, we need to, we need to have a conversation with Nina. <laughs> Let's win another explosion and it's done. So we are right there. Oh, this is a great night. You know, when you get technical problems all the time, it's, it's really hard. Then the next step, I'm just going to, uh, set up the, um, sequence and I'll be right back. 
Okay, how exciting. This is uh, all looking good. So I set up my sequence right here. Um, I do need to change the luminance for 30 seconds each frame. And I need to do a little more. I normally do about 50. That's once again the sweet spot for the telescope, the camera, and everything that I have. And I just want to be sure that I have here, yep, yeah, my file hard drive everything is in place i'm planning to take lots of pictures uh several hours probably until 2 or 3 a.m once the target it's not uh reachable anymore as there's a point that i lose it but i think it's going to be probably until 2 or 3 a.m time to turn some lights off here and i'll see you in a few minutes <music> <laughs> 